Hey everyone, welcome to Biology 3820 Pathophysiology. My name is Jamie Nixon and I have been teaching this course for 10 years now. Um, I believe I've been teaching it online for about four years. So um, I'm very familiar with the course. Now, about 80% of you have had me as an instructor before, so I don't think I'm going to take the time to introduce myself in terms of family and background and all that, but uh, rather, if you haven't had me as an instructor, I would welcome you to come see me during my office hours just so we can meet face to face and I can have an idea of um, who you are and be able to attach a face to a name. Um, I'm horrible at names, but I can usually see your name, see your face when I see your name. Um, it's generally more difficult when I see you in the hallway and have to give you a name at that point. But I do know who you are. So, um, yeah, I hope that you guys are excited to take this class. I'm excited, although um, having 55 students in an online class, that's a little intimidating um, just because. But I think it'll work. And because of the number of students, that's why if you started your discussion forums with the welcome discussion, you will see that I asked you to join a group. Therefore, you as a student don't have to look through and wade through all 55 students' comments, but rather just uh, 10 to 15, depending on how many are actually in your group. So, um, yeah, how to make this class successful. I know a lot of you are worried because it is an online class rather than face-to-face. -face. My first um, recommendation is that you set a time, set aside a time, either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, that you will devote purely to pathophysiology. Just like if it were an 8 o'clock class, a 12 o'clock class, or a 1L or 2L on Tuesday, Thursdays. That will give you um, a better grasp on your time management and your discipline and I think it will help you. In addition to that specific time, then you need to set aside the normal six to ten hours of study time that you would um, devote to a, a normal face-to-face -face course. Now, in addition to those that set study time, and that was really the strategy that I was looking for on your welcome discussion. Yes, everyone's going to read, everyone's going to look at the notes, stay on top of the assignments and all that, but you really need to set a specific time to path up that you are going to stick with throughout the semester. I would highly encourage you to, to form study groups. Um, maybe four to six students in a group, um, even maybe even three if you've got um, a good um, not necessarily friendship, um, but good study habits with uh, just a few students. Any more than that, then you're probably losing um, the benefit of the small study group, um, but also set a time, set aside a specific time that you as a group will meet, and then you can discuss things together, uh, quiz each other, um, that type of thing. Um, another thing is if you've had me in class before, you will know that I give you chapter objectives, and I will do that uh, for this course. You have objectives for chapters 1 and 2 right now because of the change from the 5th edition to the 6th edition. I haven't um, altered the figure numbers and all of that for the new version of the study guide, uh, but I hope to have that done by Monday. Uh, the study objectives are to give you a base as to, or a guide, how to study for the exam. You will have the PowerPoint notes, and there shouldn't be anything on an exam or a quiz that is not in the PowerPoint notes that I didn't specifically mention somewhere else. Um, but if you just use the PowerPoint notes, then you may have, you know, 100 to 120 slides that you need to study for a given exam. So to do that, I give you a list of chapter objectives that you can go through and answer. They are often questions, and you simply need to answer the question. Then your study guide might be 8 to 10 pages. Last semester, some of you created study guides that were maybe 28 to 30 pages long, and that is not the plan. 
that is not a concise way to study. You're just studying too much information. But rather start out big with the PowerPoint notes and then work your way down, reviewing those PowerPoint notes, memorizing that material, and then creating your study guide that is quick and concise. Um, <clears throat> another thing is with the PowerPoint notes. Right now you have Chapter 1 PowerPoint notes with no audio. If you look at that PowerPoint file, there is a note section underneath each slide, and that is basically narrative. If I were to be standing in front of you, that is how I would explain the slide. So what I hope to get accomplished tomorrow is to make an audio version of Chapter 1, and um, what you will have there is just the screenshot of the slides and maybe the mouse curse, cursor uh, moving around to actually point things out and then my fantastic, wonderful uh, voice to go along with that. Uh, there won't be a, uh, um, uh, whatever, citations within that audio file, but rather if you print off the slides and print it off with um, the notes or the slide with note version, then you can work through that, and hopefully it'll be pretty um, close to what I'm actually what I'm actually talking about. All right, and then you have your welcome discussion that it, that will close tonight, and then next week we'll start um, content specific discussion forums, something over chapter two maybe or chapter three, a, a um, topic that I want to discuss that I want you guys to think about. Your welcome discussion is worth two points. If you do it, you get all two points. Fantastic, wonderful. The content-specific discussion forums will be a little different. They will probably be worth about five points. I don't know, maybe six points. You'll get um, half credit for your initial post, and then you will have to go back and respond to two other posts, each being 25% of the total point value. Um, how much detail should you go into the discussion forum? I will typically give you some guidelines, maybe four to six sentences, uh, six to eight sentences uh, for your initial post. And then your response posts need to also have some content to them. It can't just be, oh, yeah, Susie, I agree with you. Great post. You know, those type of one-liner uh, responses aren't actually benefiting the discussion form. So um, I will try to be more uh, strict on the grading of the discussion forms for the first couple of weeks, just to give you an idea, or make comments, maybe be a little more generous with the point, but make comments to say, hey, this is, you know, nice try, you get full credit, but next week you would only have gotten this if this had been your response. Uh, try to give you guys a, a guideline. Um, all right, and then I will get your quiz one set up tonight. That will have a deadline of tomorrow night, Friday. And your quiz one content will be the syllabus. So hopefully you have printed that off or you have at least looked at it several times. And your quizzes are designed to test your the content you have put into your brain. All right, they are not open book, open note, open syllabus. No, it's from your brain. And you will have 10 minutes to complete a quiz so you will need to be prepared prior to it. And, hmm. So yeah, so that's this week. Chapter 1, um, your welcome discussion form, and then quiz 1. I will also get chapter 2 um, notes posted. Chapter 2 is going to be over genetics, and that will also have an assignment that I will post, and that will probably be due uh, next Wednesday or next Tuesday night, something like that. So you will have four or five days to complete an assignment. And therefore, if you are trying to keep ahead of the assignments, really just look at Canvas every day or every other day so that you have at least three days notice, three days of ability to get the assignment finished. Now, uh, responding to you, I've laid out how um, if you send me an email, how long it should take for me to respond. All right, if it's, you know, Monday through Friday, 8 to 3, hopefully I can respond to your email relatively quickly. 
uh, during that time frame. If you catch me while I'm sitting at my computer, it might be within 30 seconds. Um, in the evening, though, uh, because I am on sabbatical, I'm supposed to be resting or something like that, um, I may not be at my computer during the evenings as much as I was um, in the fall. So if you email me at 8 o'clock at night, there's a good chance I won't get back to you until the next morning. Or if you email me Friday at 8 o'clock in the evening, I may not get back to you. Um, I don't know. Hopefully I would I would respond before Monday morning. But please look ahead uh, so that you're not asking me a question Friday at 8 p.m. that you need the answer by Sunday at 8 to finish an assignment that might be due Sunday evening. Um, but in terms of responding to you via uh, the discussion forums and on your quizzes, things like that, uh, with 55 students, um, you may just get a quiz grade. Um, I'm not going to say great job to everyone. Um, if there is something that needs corrected, I will make that comment in the score, in the grade comment, um, with the discussion forums. I'm not going to respond to every individual comment. I just simply don't have the time. And a lot of times your comments are very similar to each other, and so it doesn't make sense to say the same thing over again. Uh, but also with the discussion forums, I've been told sometimes by the professors when the professor jumps into the discussion forum then it kind of stops the student's conversation and I don't want that to happen. So there may be times where it seems like I am not posting a whole lot in the discussion forum and that doesn't mean that I'm not reading them or looking over them. I may often look at your comments and make a comment in the grade portion of it versus um, in public with everyone else. If I see that there is something that is just absolutely wrong, then I may jump in um, and say something or email a student to have them adjust their comment or edit their comment. Um, but I think that's about all for now. And I would say expect one of these uh, fantastic, beautiful video um, videos of me once a week. Um, sorry, I just not very, I'm not a very photogenic person and I don't like this component of the course, but um, some of you may like it. But I do hope to have audio uh, for your PowerPoint notes, so that will help you out. Um, yeah, so again, because this is online, um, refer to each week's module um, frequently, just because I may find something that is uh, good content. Maybe it's a five minute video or it's another, it's a, a five minute audio of two or three slides because students have emailed me that they're having difficulty with uh, two or three slides. So do check that every day, not every day. Well, every day would be good, Monday through Friday, uh, but for sure at least three times a week so that you are on top of what is being presented. All right, uh, please don't hesitate to stop by during my office hours which typically Monday and Wednesday from about 8.30 until uh, maybe 10.30, and then Tuesdays probably by um, appointment. I will go to my office and hang out to do stuff, um, so you may find me there. And um, if those set office hours don't work for you Monday, Wednesday, shoot me an email and we can find a time to meet. So other than that, that's about it. Glad you're in Patho. I really am excited about teaching this course, even though it may not show, because that's just my personality. And since you're not in class, I won't have to make jokes and actually tell you they are jokes. So, um, happy to have you in class, and that's all for now. Thank you.